Hello, and welcome to my College Success Portfolio Defense. My name is Veronica Cañas. My advisor is Mr. Garcia. And today, I would like to start off with what the purpose of CSP is to me. CSP is about defending the skills that I have learned throughout the year by presenting artifacts and showing how education has helped me grow as a person and prepared me for college. This year for CSP, we wanted to reflect on how our identity transformed throughout the years. In order to do that, we had to write an identity statement. This here is a quote of who I believe my identity was in the past. Who I used to be was someone who was naive, had no passion, and disowned her identity. In the past, I didn't really understand who I was or why my identity was important. I felt like I couldn't really add anything to society so therefore, I felt like I didn't really have a voice. Throughout the years, my identity transformed. My 10th grade year, I started an internship with Urban Peace Movement, and there I learned the power that I had and what I was really passionate about. What I'm passionate about is advocating for youth that are impacted by the prison system. Who I am is an intelligent woman, one who will do anything for her family, who is connected to her roots and her ancestors. I am a powerful human being that has taken her identity and made it into someone who will help people and create a change. Now I understand that in order to create a change, I need to be educated. Envision Academy has pushed me because it has gave me opportunities like these where I get to express myself as a student but also learn important life skills through the process, like public speaking. In order to prove to you that I am ready and prepared for college, I will be presenting to you three of the four competencies that I have mastered, which are research, inquiry, and analysis. The first artifact that I will be presenting to you is my SCOTUS artifact, which stands for Supreme Court of the United States. I completed this artifact in Ms. Ray Bond's first period under the competency of research. My definition of research is, students learn how to transfer the knowledge they learned from analyzing credible sources to form their own opinion or arguments. Research is important because it helps us gain skills like knowing what a credible source is and being able to find key points that strengthen our arguments. The essential question for this artifact was, how have the landmark Supreme Court cases impacted society and the law? In the case that I focused on, was Roe v. Wade. Mm. Here's a diagram of how the US Supreme Court system works. All cases start at the state trial courts. If they get appealed, they move on to intermediate appellate courts. If they get appealed again, they move on to state Supreme Courts. And if they get appealed again, the US Supreme Court system decides if they want to take the case or not. This was not the case for Roe v. Wade. Jane Roe sued Henry Wade because she wanted to have an abortion, but the state of Texas made it a felony. Henry Wade was the district attorney of the county that she was living in, so therefore, he was the one that enforced this law, and therefore, she had to sue him. The Texas District Court ruled that it was illegal, illegal for the state to ban abortion, but Wade said he would continue to prosecute doctors if they performed abortions. So therefore, the case was then appealed to the US Supreme Court and usually this process is a linear process, but because Roe v. Wade would have such large implications and have a huge impact on society, it was um, accepted by the US Supreme Court. Throughout this artifact, I learned a few skills. The first one was the research skill of effectively citing my sources in MLA format, including in-text citations, as well as a bibliography. At first, this was difficult for me because I didn't really know how to create a bibliography, but I used my resources and peers to be able to. The next skill I learned was the writing skill of being able to write a thesis that fully and clearly responds to the prompt and, cl and create claims that support my thesis. My thesis was, the decision in Roe v. Wade gave women the right to privacy and choice 
through the 14th Amendment. This impacted Americans legally because now the Constitution acknowledges the right to privacy, which many have continued to fight for through other Supreme Court cases. My thesis was advanced because it fully answered the prompt, but it also had specific information about how it would impact Americans and society. My thesis was also clearly structured because it showed the audience what the essay would be touching. The 14th Amendment was crucial to this case because the 14th Amendment states that uh, a person's basic rights can't be taken away because of their gender, religion, or sexuality. Roe's right to have an abortion was getting taken away, so therefore it violated her 14th Amendment. The bigger understanding that I got from this artifact was that the Supreme Court cases are really important because they help us get another step towards equality and safety. Many people disagreed with Brown, Roe v. Wade, just like they disagreed with Brown v. Board, but both of those cases were really important because they were able to liberate people and make our society more equal. History has taught us that even when we regress, the resilience and power of the oppressed allow us to continue fighting and bring us towards the path of justice and equality. I can connect this artifact to another class, which was my AP Spanish class, where we researched a Latin American dish that was impacted by colonization. Mm. I chose mangu, which is a dish from the Dominican Republic, and there we researched about how each ingredient was impacted. I can connect this to my life because of the work that I do with the Urban Peace Movement. Just like Ro was advocating for her rights and the rights of other women, I'm advocating for youth and my peers that are impacted by the prison system. This includes me lobbying or going to protests or marches and creating events where we are able to educate people about the negative impacts of the prison system. This artifact also connects to me because as a woman, I'm happy that I have that power and choice over my body. Although that power is getting threatened in states like Alabama or other states, we always find a way to get justice. And what Roe v. Wade has taught me is that history repeats itself. Mm -hmm. Although this case happened years ago, it's something that women are still continuing to fight for. Okay. Uh, I have a question. You, um, so you mentioned like, research being important. So kind of going off of that, you mentioned looking for credible sources. How do you know? when a source is credible, like what do you look for? Um, so specifically, like I look at date, when was this published, to know how relevant it is to what's happening now. I also look, um, usually we know their credible sources by like, is this a site or that's often used by a lot of other people. They also, um, sometimes credible sources have other sources that they connect to that they get their information from, so I, I know that they're linked to other sources, then they're probably more credible. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> Similarly, okay. um, and you also have an MLA format. Mm -hmm. and I remember when I was learning that, I always thought it was like so annoying to yeah. have to format a certain way. Why do you think it's important to be aware of like how to format? Yeah. Um, well, organization, first of all. I think also like, if your paper is organized in MLA format or in another format, um, it is easier for the teacher to understand what you're doing or how organized it is. Um, I just think it's a skill for that we use for anything. Um, how organized something is really does show like how much work you put into this paper. Oh, oops. Uh, so, you talked about why this fully supports the prompt. Can you uh, speak on what specific um, skills and techniques you as a student use in order to get advanced on these? Um, like leadership skills or just or skills can, in general? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll tell you about these yeah. Things. So, um, for me personally, what I like doing is creating drafts of, thesis and, uh, of a thesis. I then like shared that with Ms. Ray Vaughn or other peers that were doing Roe v. Wade um, and then make revisions. Um, that way I was able to like, I also, oh, what also really helps me is um, 
creating my background uh, or my intro uh, essay first and creating an outline and then based off that creating my thesis so that it matches what I'm going to be doing already. Are there skills from this artifact that you think would be relevant as you go off to college in a few months? And if so, like how? Oh, of so course, <laughs> research. Um, a skill that helped me a lot, what, and, I, and I, whenever I'm doing research and it's something that I really struggle with is when I'm looking for specific evidence and I really know what I really need. Um, and it's hard to find that because there's so much articles, uh, Ms. Rayvon, what I learned in this class um, is to use key words when we're searching things. So that was something that really helped me because instead of going through a lot of different articles, I was able to like narrow down my options and that was really would be really helpful because I know if I have a lot of work during college, I can't be wasting so much time reading every article to find what I really need. The next artifact that I will be presenting is Foxes and Rabbits, which I completed in Mr. Dano's second period under the competency of inquiry. To me, inquiry is research driven by mathematical or scientific data that solves problems or answers questions. Inquiry is important because it challenges us to research for answers, and by doing this, we are learning key knowledge but also problem solving. But we are, all, we are also learning to not give up even when the problem seems really difficult. The essential question for this artifact was, how can we use trigonometric functions to model real world data? The problem that we were solving was um, trying to figure out if the decrease in population of foxes and rabbits should be worrying to scientists. So as you can see here, this is the data that we gathered from the population of foxes and rabbits. And as the population of foxes decreases, so does the population of rabbits, and that shows us that it's a direct relationship. The key knowledge that I had to know for this artifact was amplitude, which is the distance between the midline and the maximum and minimum points, but also it also shows us the um, change in population and shows us if it's stable or not. We also had to understand what period was, which, the, which is the amount of time it takes for the population to go back to its original amount. The, por the formula to solve for period is two pi divided by p. We also had to understand midline, which is also known as the average. A math skill that I gained during this artifact is finding the vertical shift, period, and amplitude of a sine or cosine function. This is a cosine function, and you can tell because it reaches its maximum point at the starting point. The amplitude for this graph is 49.9. The period was 12 months, and the maximum amount of time, and the maximum amount of foxes was 150, and the minimum was 50 foxes. The midline was at 100, which is also the average. Something I observed was that every 12 months, the population would go back to its original amount, which was 150. I also learned not to just use the graph to find from my solutions, but also use the equation. For example, the amplitude is always at the start of the equation, and the midline is always at the end of the equation, which is the same as well. A math skill that I gained was analyzing and identifying properties of a non-trigonometric function. The non-trigonometric function that I chose was the linear function, which was, oh, sorry, which the coefficient of determination was 0 0.016, which also equals 1.6 accuracy. As you can see, the linear model does not fit the scatter plot at all. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, cosine function was 100% accurate. Um, <clears throat> In order to understand trigonometric functions, I also had to understand their properties. One of the important properties that I learned about was amplitude. Here's the difference between a graph uh, with a high amplitude and one with a lower amplitude. The one with the higher amplitude is showing us that there's less stability 
and that more scientists should be worried about this graph rather than a graph with a lower amplitude. The big understanding that I got from this artifact is that data is used everywhere and it is really important because it can help us create predictions about things that we might need to worry about in the future. An example of that is Ms. Sedano's prior artifact where we had to analyze the population of San Francisco and Oakland and create a prediction of what would happen to that population in the future. I came to the conclusion that the population of Oakland would be increasing because of the gentrification that's been happening and how much more people are coming into the city than the amount of people that are getting pushed out. I can connect this to my physics class because, that I took my junior year because we also talked about sine and cosine waves. The difference was that in physics we talked about sine and cosine waves in sound and light, but they had similar vocabulary. For example, amplitude in sound just means how louder the sound gets or how um, lower it gets. And period in, in, color, in light is also known as the wavelength. The larger the wavelength is, the closer it is to infrared, and the smaller the wavelength is, the closer it is to ultraviolet. This connects to my life because I believe that data can be used to create a change. Data has the power to show our society what we need to change. For example, this year I uh, volunteered at the polls during this election, and the data that I gathered was that not enough young people of color were voting. I then used that data and pushed it to a Peace Movement to start a campaign where we could start registering more people, young people of color to vote. Questions? Uh, so, can you go back to the, uh, the math skills? Oh, which one? So the first, I believe? Yeah. Uh, the data points that you got, the amplitude uh, period, can you talk through how you found those, or were they just given and you had fun? Oh, no. So none of these, none of these were given. So the point of the artifact was in a, to understand this trigonometric function, we had to understand its properties. So for amplitude, uh, we were, the easy way is to find it right here at the equation. Once we put these, uh, the data, the population that we got, once we put it into decimals, the um, equation was given to us, but you could also find it at the, um, if you solve for it, uh, for period, you, you're also able to solve for it by um, using the two pi divided by b equation. Um, and then maximum and minimum points, you find them on the graph, and then the midline, you also find it on the graph, but also on the equation. basically means that there's less stability in the population of foxes. So when it reaches its maximum points, it then decreases a lot more than how it would reach on a, in a lower amplitude. So that change in um, the decrease in population is how it should, is what makes, is what should be making scientists more worried about the population. Is there Um, mm -hmm. so, could you repeat your question again, sorry? That's fine. Is, is there another graph or another piece, whether it's amplitude, midline, uh, mass or min, that would show uh, that the scientists should be worried? Oh, the, um, yeah, so the midline right here, that is what tells us our average. Okay. Um, so if the midline is at a lower point, which means that would mean that the average is also at a lower point, which means that the population is uh, 
decreasing more or also at a lower um, rate, then, but basically it would affect the population more and it would make scientists more worried about the population. For the, I was in the, in the future, so you said one of, one of the things that would impact the impact would be around oh, yeah. the prison mm -hmm. okay. population. So what kind of data would you, yeah, would you need? So, are you talking about in the future, like what I want to be doing? Okay, yeah. So, for example, um, so our urban peace movement do do a lot of data research because in order, so when we have meetings uh, with the district attorney, mm -hmm. in order to prove to her, like, there's something that's going on right now with the county and how much people are getting incarcerated, we need to have that data and show it to her. So um, just data in general is really important um, to be able to prove that you understand what you're talking about and also prove that there needs to be a change. And what type of function might model the prison, prison population to the district attorney that What graph would you um, see? What function would you see? Like what type of function? Yeah, okay. Oh, um, so, okay, so basically what would happen is that it would have the years here and the population, so it would be increasing because it has just been increasing. So right now, um, after the <laughs> the bail crime, which we learned in, oh, mis right. in research, after that passed, so much more people of color were getting incarcerated. So ever since then, it's been increasing and it hasn't stopped. So that's something that should be worrying to us, and that's something that me and Urban Peace Movement have been working on to create more like co-governance with the district attorney because she's the one that has the power to put these people in jail or give them better alternatives. Mm -hmm. So we okay. The next artifact that I will be presenting to you is my Maison Saint artifact which I completed in Mr. Garcia's fifth period under the competency of analysis. The definition of analysis is taking a complex body of work and breaking it down into smaller parts that can be observed to create patterns and inferences to gain a deeper understanding. The central question was, how can artists use non-literal elements to strengthen a story and enhance the audience experience how can film be viewed as literature? So in order to understand, in order to start this artifact, we had to understand what mise-en-scene is. Mise-en-scene is a film theory concept where a filmmaker uses visual elements to enhance the story and audience experience. We learned how to analyze mise-en-scene in the film Black Panther, and we analyzed the costumes. We then learned how to create planes in order to create our thesis. I transferred that knowledge onto the film that I chose, which was The Shining. The key knowledge that I had to know for this artifact was the main thoughts and elements, which were R, color, editing, sound design, trappings, framing, lighting, and set design. I focus on color, sound design, framing, and set design. An example of color, but also set design, is The Golden Room. Um, gold represents insanity, which I learned is through the color theory. Mm -hmm. And in this scene, we were able to see that the main character was completely insane. For sound design, the director decided to use music that resembled a heartbeat to make the audience more anxious. Uh, for the framing scene, the director decided to use uh, framing techniques or like um, a handheld camera so that whenever we were following the little boy in the hallways, it kind of felt like we were part of a, the movie, like a character in the movie, instead of just an audience watching. We also used visuals to create a thesis by understanding what Maison Sin is. A skill that I learned during this artifact was analysis. In order to do that, we first had to make observations. An observa observation that I made in The Shining was that the colors red and yellow were constantly repeated. 
Red represents danger and yellow represents insanity. I then identified the pattern of these colors were showing when something bad was going to be happening. Every time we saw the main car character surrounded by these colors, he was a step closer to murdering his family oh. or, or committing a negative act. In the golden room, uh, the main character was drinking, although he was supposed to be sober. I then drew the inference and, made, and drew the conclusion that the director was trying to tell us that our toxic ways of coping is what bring out our evil side and break apart our families. The writing skill that I mastered during this artifact was creating the thesis. My thesis was, the shining uses Maison Sin elements of sound design, color, framing, and set design to push the audience to connect with the experience of the characters, which makes us realize the theme that because every personality has a dark and evil side, if we give in to it, it will break down the nuclear family structure. My thesis was advanced because it addressed the themes, every personality has a dark and evil side, and the breakdown of a nuclear family structure, but I was able to connect them and explain how the elements of Maison Sin correlated with the themes. I also learned, something new that I learned during th this unit um, was the, how to create a thesis. So we first did the what, which was the themes, the plus a verb, which was connect or push the audience to connect, and the big idea, which was my conclusion that because every theme, because every person has a dark and evil side, um, they, it could break down the nuclear family structure. The bigger understanding that I got from this artifact is that it is important to always, to always look at the small details, because even those matter, and they could potentially have the answers that we are looking for. I also connected this to social media because it is a tool that can be used to create a change. By applying the elements of Maison Sin, we can reach a greater audience and create a stronger message. A prime example of that was the Black Lives Matter movement. I can connect this to Ms. Lister's artifact speeches for change because I created a speech about uh, breaking the school to prison pipeline. And just like rhetoric was used in that speech we, to make the speech more persuasive and stronger, we can use Maze on Sin to make a film more meaningful and engaging. Both of them are extremely important because they will help us get our message across in a way that will help us persuade our audience to do what we want them to do. Rhetoric and Maze on Sin are similar because they both get us get an emotional reaction out of us. This connects to my life because I want to help people be more involved in social justice movements. But sometimes that can be difficult yeah. because of the legal terms or sometimes it's just hard to understand what's happening, what injustices are happening to you. Analysis has given me the skills to deconstruct those terms and explain to people in a way that <laughs> is more understanding for them. An example of that for me is my parents are immigrants. So when they receive legal papers or have to do any work with the lawyer, I'm, I'm always there to help them and help them deconstruct those terms so that it's more helpful for them. Any questions? I'm just curious, like you, so the task when you picked a movie, mm -hmm. and you wrote a, you were at Florida now, Paper about it. Mm -hmm. um, how did you choose The Shining? Um, so I, <laughs> yeah. I love horror movies. Okay. Um, and I just don't, I feel like The Shining is just unique because it's not a movie about getting you scared. It's like really a movie where you have to think about everything that's happening. Okay. So before, I, before, I didn't, before we started the Maison Sin unit, I didn't even hear about what Maison Sin was. Um, but when watching this movie, I was like, wait, I did not even notice that at all. Like the colors, what, like what, and then after watching that, um, after watching The Shining with Maison Saint, when I watch movies now, I always think about Maison Saint. What does that color mean? Why, why did the director decide to use this camera or stuff like that? Um, because like, I really did learn that during this unit, like every small detail matters. And like sometimes when we're so just watching a movie, 
we're not really looking at everything, we're just following the story, but everything matters. element. So when we focus on costumes, we focus on the color of the costumes. So something that we noticed during the party scene where they were um, trying to find the agent or something like that, um, the three of them were wearing, one of them was wearing black, one of them was wearing red, and the other one was wearing green. I did not even notice that until Mr. Garcia said that basically the percentage of the African black. Um, so basically little stuff like that, like all those things matter. Um, so that's how we were able to uh, like kind of see what make, how many of affects it, the film. Curiously, in terms of uh, your future pursuits, like mm -hmm. you said, in terms of don't be like urban peace movement, maybe mm -hmm. advertisement, or maybe advertisements yeah. that are for and against um, mm -hmm. people that are in prison, where have you like maybe seen um, advertisements? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, last year I did my internship with Urban Peace Movement um, during my WLE. And something that we've been trying to focus a little bit more on is social uh, media campaigning, just because it's so huge. Like there's videos that go viral because of social media. So we've been trying to use that tool to our advantage. So one of the things that we notice is that are like, that is really popular are memes. Mm -hmm. So we have, we decided during my internship, our main focus was trying to create, like using digital media um, and like Photoshop and stuff like that to create memes about stuff that people generally don't know. So for example, did you know that you can vote for the district attorney? Or um, like, basically, it, the way I use means on sin and those elements was the color that we were using or um, the images that we were using. Um, for Black Panther, I mean, sorry, the Black Lives Matter movement, yeah. that was, I think that's a prior, like a prime example because first, Black Lives Matter, like that phrase, it's, so some people can be really controversial mm -hmm. because every life matters, we know that. But why are they using Black Lives Matter? It's a way to catch attention, it's a way for people to say, what does this even mean? It's a way for people to go onto their website. What does this mean, what do they do? Um, and also, yeah, so stuff like that. So using, using those skills to my advantage in order to create social media. Move on. Okay. Okay. So now I would like to talk about the leadership skills that I used during this year. I would like to rate myself advanced in thinking critically, completing projects effectively, and communicating powerfully. I consider myself to be advanced in thinking critically because my analysis has become more thorough this year. And that is because I have learned to use sources outside of my peers and teachers. Mm -hmm. This has helped me gain a different perspective. I was also able to complete projects effectively because I like creating my own benchmark and going on my own timeline. This way I can stay ahead and make sure I have the time to revise and also this also really helped me because it gave me the time that I needed to make sure that everything that I was, that my artifacts were all advanced. I also communicated powerfully because I felt like my writing skills have improved and I was able to prove that I understand my message but also what the message of the artifact was and explain it with rhetoric and a deep understanding. I think I can improve on collaborating productively because I, take, I tend to take over like team projects. Um, and I kind of feel like I don't, I don't really make space for others, like especially if it's like something that I'm really, really passionate about. I'm like, I know what this is already. I, I want to do it. Um, so an example of that was the, ooh, sorry. An example of that was the PSA artifact, um, which was where we had to create like a PSA based off the speech that we did. And mine was the school to person pipeline, which is something that I like research about all the time. So I knew exactly what I wanted on the PSA. 
Um, on the other hand, my team members were kind of just like learning about this concept. Gotcha. So I had like a straight vision and I really wanted that vision to come to life. So instead of having my teammates add to my vision, it's kind of like they just follow my vision, which is something that I want to work on. After graduation, I will be attending Wesleyan <laughs> University. <laughs> uh, because I want to improve on my collaborating productively skills, I want to balance my leadership. And this leadership to me isn't just me being a leader or something, but also pushing others to become leaders. Um, my strategy for this is stepping back, and also, but also creating a space where people feel comfortable to be a leader. In college, I also want to be in clubs and like I said in my identity statement, use my voice as something that can change the community away of Wesley. Some of the clubs that I'm interested in is Agua Campos, which is the Latinx club in Wesleyan, Women of Color Collective, and the Students for Envy Mass Incarceration. So like in terms of like my long-term goals, like I know throughout this whole presentation I've talked about. I want to create a change. I want to do something to help my people. Um, I think like what I think about when I want to create a change is just not just me myself, but also gathering people and teaching them about what's happening and ed being a voice of ed like not just uh, a person that wants to create a change, but also a person that wants to educate others about that change. Um, so for example, like. I've been working with Urban Peace Forum for, for three years, and every single time we have an event, I'm always telling everybody, come to this event, we want to learn. Ms. Ray Vaughn has been to those events, some students from my class have been to those events. Um, so like, I think long term, like, I'm not sure what I wanna do with that voice yet. Mm -hmm. I do know that I just, I know like what the purpose of it is, and that is to help people and to create a change. And that could be through, if I want to major in computer science, like I want to create technology that actually helps mm. uh, black and brown people, you know? Yeah. Or if I want to become a politician, I want to be a voice for people that probably they don't see a Latina mm -hmm. up on the stage talking about <laughs> ending mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I do know, like I just, I know what I want, what I know is that I want to use my voice um, and I think that's my long-term goal, use my voice at, in any way, at all times, that I can. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I would like to give props to um, my family, my mom and my dad, which are here. Um, and without them, like, every single day since I was a little girl, like, Veronica, you're going to college. We came here to help you. We want everything we want. Is, we just want you to be successful. And now I'm doing it, and like it's right in front of their eyes, and like they're just so I know that they're so proud of me, but like I'm so glad that they did that sacrifice because without them, like really nothing, I would be no one. Because they taught me that hard work is really, really important, um, and I couldn't ask for better parents. Mm -hmm. um, and also a huge props to my amazing, amazing teachers. And, <laughs> and um, staff here from Envision and principals and everyone because like I know like we always hear why CSP or like why do we have to do this defense right why do I have to prove that I'm ready for college um, but honestly like if I were to have CSP or BP which we do in 10th grade year like I wouldn't have this skill to publicly speak in front of 40 people um, so a CSP is also like a huge time to reflect like I'm not thinking about how my identity was in the past and how it is now. I wasn't thinking about that before CSP. Um, so mm, my teachers has helped, have helped me a lot, especially Mr. Garcia. I'm asking him every day, Mr. Garcia, I need a percent, I need a percent. And he's all like, okay. But yeah, huge um, prop to them. And uh, without my teachers, I also wouldn't be able to do this either. Thank you. <laughs>